Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Fantasy News. I am your goblin host, Daniel Green, and today, let's just dive right into the fantasy news here. There is a casting call going out for extras to be involved with the Dresden Files trailer for the upcoming book, Peace Talks. I, of course, will have links to check it out and find out whether or not you want to get involved based on the criteria right down below in the description there. But this is pretty neat. I have pretty high expectations for a trailer for Dresden Files. It's an incredibly popular series and Peace Talks is highly anticipated. So this should be a lot of fun. And I'm excited for any of you all who decide to try and get involved. R.F. Kong, the author of The Poppy War and the Dragon Republic, has announced the title and release date for book three. The title will be The Burning God, and it will have a 2020 release date, we hope. She specifically cites the fact that this is a confusing and difficult process, and the author is not always in charge of when a book will go out. Publishers are heavily involved in that. So yes, let's hope that's the case, but we're not 100% sure it could be delayed or even out sooner. But The Burning God, expect somewhere, I would say late 2020. And in a quickie last minute update, Raymond E. Feist tweeted, okay, just got the info on publication of Queen of Storms. Rather than the country by country rollout we had last book, this time the English language edition will be released in the US and UK export on the same day, July 14th. It's later than originally planned because two out of three markets want it as a midsummer release, and I'm okay with anything that gives me the best market visibility. Money grubber that I am. So, late summer reading anyone? Now let's go ahead and transition to what's become the standard here on Fantasy News, and that is Witcher News. It has been announced that season two will begin production in the February of 2020. That is right around the corner, and just a small amount of time after the airing of season one. Netflix has to have a lot of faith for this adaptation. It doesn't give them a ton of breathing room to make drastic changes if it's negatively received or there's a lot of critical feedback from fans, so they must really believe they got this right or they have a plan in place to make some pretty drastic changes if they must for the fans but hey it looks like they're confident i'm confident at this point let's go witcher and let's go ahead and wrap up the witcher news here they've announced the chapter titles for all of season one going over them now we have the end's beginning four marks betrayer moon of banquets bastards and burials bottled appetites rare species before a fall, much more. They posted this whole dramatic uh, video on their Instagram and Twitter, of course, also linked down there. If while you're checking it out, you wouldn't mind leaving a like. I'd much appreciate it. Gotta whore myself out. And yeah, you could have experienced those titles in a much better presented way. Sorry, you just had to hear me read them. But yes, if you'd like to see the cool video right down there. Let's go ahead and quickly jump into the trailer news here. A new Half-Life game has been announced and its trailer is here. It's a VR game. Some people have been making the meme that like VR was dying and this is gonna bring it back. Very little indications are happening that VR is dying. Yeah, the market isn't growing at what some people thought it would, but no, VR is not dying and this game's not gonna single-handedly save it, but it could be a boon and bring in some new players. Cool. I am ecstatic to see another Half-Life game be coming out. Certainly going to try and play this one. Need to get a VR headset again. Haven't had one in a long time. But let me know in the comments down below, are you pumped for this Half-Life game? Is it gonna inspire you to buy an entirely new uh, rig so that you can play it? Because if you don't have a VR capable setup right now, this will be a high price point to gain entry into playing this game. And let's go ahead and just knock out the rest of the trailer news here today. We had a trailer drop for Doctor Who Season 12. The name's Doctor. The Doctor. The security of this entire planet is at stake. Can we rely upon you? I'm not where I wanted to be. Back and work with this. It looks like Doctor Who to me. Nothing seriously jumps out. It's Doctor Who. I haven't been a huge Doctor Who fan in a long time, uh, but good for the Doctor Who fans. I know there's a lot of things happening and changing the show, and you know, I never want bad things to happen for Doctor Who. It's a sci-fi classic that I hope continues to have a long, healthy life. It's just not something that really intrigues me. 
anymore. And of course, since we talked about the last Star Wars TV spot to drop in the last episode of Fantasy News, they put out another one because why not show so much of the movie? More is more instead of less is more for entertainment now. Great. Confronting fear is the destiny of a Jedi. Your destiny. If this mission fails, it was all for nothing. We're not alone. Good people will fight if we lead them. Your journey nears its end. There's also been rumors circulating about early press screenings for uh, the Rise of Skywalker and people saying it's absolutely terrible, et cetera, et cetera. I have looked into these. I don't know how credible they are. I also just don't necessarily want to talk about early reactions, not you know high enough rate of people giving these thoughts or confirming, denying them for me to really give much credence to them. So we're just going to move on, enjoy the TV spot, and I'll review Rise of Skywalker when Rise of Skywalker is released. But just transitioning into the rest of the Star Wars news, we're going to make it quick news here we got a new look at the sith troopers they look they look like red red storm troopers so cool and we got an explanation of why baby yoda merch wasn't available right away when the mandalorian was released i'd say spoiler warning but literally all of the internet has transformed into like baby yoda memes so i'm sure you've already been made aware of this creature and basically it was because they didn't want it leaked that the baby yoda was going to be a thing apparently star wars and entertainment in general often when they have these leaks it's because merchandise has been ordered so they just didn't order any merchandise for baby yoda until the episode aired and now they have and so soon we will be seeing baby yoda merch to make up for the lack of baby yoda merch somewhere maddie is just very happy and now just getting into quick brief adaptation news sam keith's comic the max is set to be adapted with channing tatum involved i don't know if this is just like his all right i'm not going to be gambit so i'm going to be involved with this or if this is another just sincere deep passion product for him i hope that's the case but cool a another adaptation for comics Neat. I actually haven't heard of this one. If anyone is like a big fan, let me know in the comments down below what you think of it. If it's something I should add to my TBR. I kind of want to get back into graphic novels and uh, and um, comics in general here. I've been reading uh, Bone and it's been wonderful. Kind of reminded me of how much I did like uh, that medium before I just kind of fell out of it and got into just reading nothing but books. So... Maybe, maybe I'll pick this one up. And we have another casting coming down the road for the upcoming The Batman Movie. John Turturro has been cast as crime boss Carmen Falcone. I really enjoy this guy. I, for some reason, he's one of those people where it's like, I never think of him, but then when I see him in a movie, I'm like, oh, he's great. So John, I can't wait to see you in the Batman. You weirdly seem to like fit this right. This actually seems like a really good casting, though I would have never thought of it in a million years, but cool a lot of thumbs up this video a lot of thumbs up positive day and we also had neil gaiman again i just wanted to mention this because he's doing it again reaffirming that the sandman adaptation will remain true to his source material while also changing things a bit most notably from this confirming it will be in more of a 2019 setting instead of when the book takes place i believe in the 80s i don't know why these creative decisions are often done to like bring things to modern times i have a theory or a suspicion it's budget related because it is expensive to dress up whole sets like the 80s as opposed to just you know it's now so leave it but it also doesn't seem to be a real betrayal of the source material and with neil gaiman coming out and repeatedly saying no this is my story i'm putting my name on that that's a really good sign to me. Neil Gaiman has high integrity and is a great author, so this should be a very interesting adaptation to see develop. And in the news that I'm sure brought a lot of people here that are not already subscribed to the channel, Keanu Reeves is going to be involved in a superhero movie with the Russo brothers. No, it is not MCU related. The project is titled Past Midnight, a Netflix superhero feature set to star Reeves in the lead role. Keanu Reeves is like the man of 2019, so it's neat to hear. I'm excited to see that. I have a lot of faith in the Russo brothers as directors in terms of handling action, developing character. That's all great. Keanu Reeves is Keanu freaking Reeves, so wonderful. The only thing I'm a bit worried about here is a Netflix original superhero film. I know uh, some superhero indie films have really done well, and Netflix isn't necessarily indie. They can give big budgets, but with the standard being set so high for superhero movies now, I'm just 
interested in what it's going to be. Is it going to be more in the Chronicle vibe, more of a Joker vibe, an MCU type deal? With the Russo brothers behind it, a lot of people might assume that, but they could totally diverge from that tone. This one I will certainly be keeping an eye on as well for several reasons. And in the final bit of news I want to cover on here today and a just kind of, oh, this will be wonderful for fans, bit of news. So I just like delivering it. I like bringing it to you. For the 15th anniversary of Avatar The Last Airbender, a complete steel box set is being released with all kinds of bonus material. Link to the article about it down below. It looks gorgeous, a lot of content there, and it's actually something I'm even tempted to buy here. I do want to point out though, as far as I can tell, this is an Avatar The Last Airbender complete set. It will not include The Legend of Korra, but it does have all new art for each book, bonus content with creators, behind the scenes stuff. Very interesting. If you're a big hardcore Avatar fan, definitely up your alley, especially if you know a fan with Christmas coming down the road. But this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my two latest high tier Patreons. Jared Johnson, which absolutely sounds like a Stan Lee name. Love it. And Andy Musk. Sounds like a villain name. You guys may need to battle forever. Thank you guys so much for the support on Patreon. Much appreciated.